Genesis chapter 32 this morning. For those of you on Facebook, if you don't see the live button in the corner, that means that you are catching me on the replay. I would like to thank you for tuning in. We're going into Genesis chapter 32 this morning. Give me a second. Let me get let me get myself set up here. Uh, let's see. I guess I got messages. I didn't know I had. All right, Genesis chapter 32 this morning. And let's get this shared over to the um, trim page. And then we're going to get ready to go into what we're going to go into this morning. this other here and then we will be ready to go this morning Genesis chapter 32 this morning doing prayer this morning, but I want y'all to, to pray for me this morning to be able to convey this thought or reveal that the Lord has given me. I was in there getting myself ready, and as always, you know, I'm always like, God, where do you want me to go with this? What do you want me to do? Because, you know, it's, it's um, this is like really more I don't want to use the word hard, but for lack of a better word, I would say, you know, it's very um, meticulous, um, very strategic in how it is that you have to do things concerning uh, what it is for God. Because you're not hearing for yourself, you're actually hearing the voice of God to convey over to his people. So it's a lot more difficult than what it may seem to be able to do. So um, just in, you know, in the times of all throughout the night, you know, then getting up in the morning, getting in the shower, getting fresh to be ready. You got to hear, you know, to hear what the Lord would have for you to say, because prayer always has to have a focus. If you're praying and don't have a focus, then you're praying amiss. You're just missing the target. So um, as I was just, you know, in meditation this morning and allowing myself to just really link, you know, link up with God and connect to him. The Lord um, spoke something to me concerning Jacob. So I went, came to the scripture and found exactly what I heard. So I'm going to share that this morning with us as our focus thought on this morning is coming out of Genesis chapter 32. I need to make it a declaration to just decree it. And I would say for you to decree it as well over your life. Um, this is the thing that the Lord gave me this morning to share. Our focus thought is going to be the best you is on the inside. That's what I heard God say. The best you is on the inside. The best you is on the inside. So just maybe, just possibly, it may be that you're really not walking out the best you. And you may not be walking out the best you because you're still living in the old you or you're living in the spoken you that that has been um, projected upon you or that that has been taught to you. You may, you may be walking in that. So you're not walking in the best you. But the Lord wanted me to let you know today that the best you is on the inside. The best you is on the inside. The best you, the best version of you is on the inside. Now, I understand that that sounds very contradictory because in the context, we always hear that people are just nasty on the inside. They're nasty. But the Lord has created us to be who 
He's purposed us to be and it lives on the inside. It is that thing that the Bible says when it says every man is born with the measure of faith. The measure of faith means that faith is the thing that connects us to God because we have to understand that faith is the substance of things hoped for and it is the evidence of things not seen. Then we also got to understand that without faith, it is impossible to please him. So God grants everybody the measure of faith, which is the ability to be able to believe beyond what you see, beyond the current circumstance of where you are, beyond where your feet currently reside beyond where your circumstance or your situation currently is. So God gives us the measure of faith, meaning a precise, a precise location, a precision about a, a, a location or a narrative or a direction. God gives us that. So every man has the measure of faith, which is that thing that lives on the inside of us. It has to be cultivated. It has to literally be poured out. It literally, it is that thing where people are saying, I'm trying to find my purpose. That's what they are saying. You know, I'm literally trying to see why was I created? Why am I here? What is it that I'm to do? It is that thing right there that God has placed on the inside. So that is why I say to you this morning, contrary to what we have literally been heard and been taught and have literally been schooled in is the fact that, you know, just nasty from the inside and to a certain degree that is true, but there still is this seed in the inside. There's still this portion that is on the inside. And when we go into Genesis chapter 32, we're able to see this in action within a man's life by the name of Jacob. So Genesis chapter 32, Jacob is this one now. He is this particular one. His name, Jacob, is surplanted. His name, Jacob, is cunning. His name, Jacob, means uh, crafty. You know, it means all of the things that we fight to not be. All of the things that we say are literally um, our destroyer. Uh, the things that we say does not mean good. Things that we don't want to admit about ourselves. These are things that we literally suppress or hide about ourselves. But all these things are things that are said about Jacob. So it, they, this is what Jacob is known as. Jacob is known. Jacob is literally reared into a situation where his mom literally assists him in deceiving his father. So all of this is a nature that has been given on to Jacob, some of it hereditary, which has been given over unto him. So in that context, what it says here is, that's why I'm telling you that the greater you or the best you is on the inside of you. Jacob, he is literally now pulled into an arena concerning, and now he's become some things that maybe not really who he want to be, but these things are who he's portraying himself out to be. But I just need to tell you, this morning that you, you, you look man listen just let me encourage you this morning you you you're not who you're not who you have been born or or a genetically um positioned to be but there is a greater one that's on the inside of you. You're not even who people have literally called you out to be because there is a greater one on the inside of you. If I was who people had called me out to be, I would first be a mother of a bunch of kids because when I was growing up, they said I was too grown and that I would literally have a whole bunch of kids. Well, I only naturally birthed two kids, but I got three kids. You know, I have three children. And so to me, that is a small number. That's not a bunch of kids. Like they said, I'm thinking maybe seven, eight kids or however that I was so fast that that was what was going to happen. So I am not a product of words that was spoken, although there were words that were spoken um, concerning me that, you know, there, there were all types of things that I would, you know, literally end up in places that I did not end up in. Thank God. But there was also some genetic things that was going on in my life that I literally had to overcome. And so I need to talk to you for a little bit this morning to talk to that best part of you. I need to talk to that part inside of you that maybe hasn't been ministered to that part inside of you that just 
needs to be encouraged. That that part inside of you, which is the measure of faith that God gives. I need to speak to that part of you to let you know that there is more to your life than what you see. There is more to your life, God help me, than what you are experiencing. There is more to your life. Uh, I can assure you and promise you that, that there is more to your life. The God part of your life is the best part of your life. It's not, not the best part of waking up. It's not Folgers in your cup, but the best part of waking up is God in your soul. That is the best part of waking up. So I need to talk to that part, but let's grab some text this morning, Genesis chapter 32, and let's start this thing at verse 24. It says, and Jacob was left alone. Boy, let's work this text this morning. And Jacob was left alone, and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day. Now I need to give y'all the revelation of this scripture as the Lord would have me to give it to you. Now that is synonymous in saying that there was a separate entity that Jacob was fighting with. Well, I need you to understand and know that there is a separate entity that you are fighting with. There is the God you and there is the natural you that is having a battle. God help me. Anytime there is an assignment, we're going to do this this morning, God. Yeah, we finna do every bit of it early on a Tuesday morning, ain't we? Let's go. Okay, so listen, there is the part of you that God has called that is the part of you that I like to use the word assignment. There is the part of you that God has assigned into the earth for, for a particular time. I feel the Holy Ghost, y'all. There is a part of you that has an assignment. It has a, a purpose. It carries the, the intellect of God. It carries the uh, the fortitude of God. It, it houses the presence of God. It is that part of you. And then there is the part of you that uh, shaped and molded by the genetic ba uh, background. It is that part of you as to where you got your mama's eyes, you got your daddy's hands, that, that part of you, that genetic makeup. And so in the genetic makeup, what happens is, is we are conditioned to be what the genetic would have for us to be. Some families have taken on the nature of being fighters. Uh, uh, they teach the kids to fight. Everybody in the family are just fighters. Some p families are, they are timid. You know, there is, um, they're very reserved people. Some some families, you know, pride themselves on on being uh, a strong people and pride themselves on being very hard workers. And so these are the genetic types of things. Some families pride themselves on we don't take no crap, you know, They're, that all that type stuff. So these those are the genetic type things. But what about that part of you, that God part, that assignment part of you? What about that part of you that God? Calls called part of you, that chosen part of you, that part that you were placed into the earth for specific reasons. See, there is that's where the dilemma comes in. Because of the situation, if you don't watch, that natural part will literally subdue that part on the inside, which is the measure of faith. It will literally subdue that part and it will take it over or dominate that part. And so when that part begins to dominate, that natural part that 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 flesh part begins to dominate it will literally subdue or eradicate everything that the measure of faith is trying to birth they are contrary one to another they do not understand each other they do not get along with each other there is my spirit has literally told me to do things on I don't know how many occasions that my flesh said girl you crazy you better not do that what go over there and do what to get him what you crazy uh-uh you know because it is so contradictory to each other so we see a situation here where there is Jacob which is cunning which is supplanter which is uh uh he is a deceiver he he's uh literally a manipulator and all Jacob is all of these things here and it says in verse 24 in Genesis 32 and 24 that Jacob was left alone there is nothing like a battle when you're by yourself 
yourself and when you got to see yourself. Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man. There was a fight going on on the inside of him until the breaking. Notice the word it uses. I love the text. It says until the breaking, God help me. There has to be a breaking that takes place, Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, somebody this morning just need to say, God, I give you permission to just break me. Uh, just what I need you to do. Just go on and break me. Uh, because